Today I'm going to talk to you about doing inference for large amounts of time series data using temporalgps.jl. You can find these slides at my personal GitHub page. And I'd like to thank Invenia for supporting me while writing these slides. They work almost exclusively in Julia and they're hiring. So Gaussian processes are, amongst other things, a tool for nonlinear regression. So suppose you've got an unobserved function here denoted with the blue dashes, and you get to make observations of it at a small number of points. And based on these points, you want to infer something about the rest of the function. Now, Gaussian processes are distributions of functions. So every time you sample from one, you get a function. And they're almost uniquely convenient in that conditioning on observations is closed form. By which I mean you can take a Gaussian process, condition it on some data, and then you get another Gaussian process which will go through those data points. So every time you sample from it, the sample paths literally go through the data points. You can relax this a bit and have kind of noisy observations, that's fine, but for the sake of this discussion, they're noise-free. And so you can see, as you move further away from the data, the samples become more varied, which reflects the fact that you should have higher uncertainty about what the function is going to do further away from the data, unless you know something else about the function. Now, th their famous problem is that they scale poorly to large numbers of observations, cubically in time and quadratically in memory. And in practice, this manifests itself um, in such a way that the time taken to compute the log probability of a data set, which is kind of arguably the core operation along with conditioning that you need to do with Gaussian processes. To compute the log probability of about 10,000 data requires about 10 seconds on an average laptop if you use a single thread. And in this case, I used steno.jl, but the picture would be roughly the same for any other package. Now, of course, you can scale this up a bit using a larger computer and more threads, but fundamentally the picture is it will scale cubically. And so if you wanted to condition on, say, 10 million observations, because you had quite a long time series or you had a very um, highly regularly sampled time series, you couldn't do it using the standard approach to inference. One approach to scaling GPs that works well for time series is to convert them into, e either exactly or approximately, into linear stochastic differential equations, SDEs. Once you've done that, various inference, well, almost all inference tasks become much more straightforward. In particular, to compute, so the log probability of a collection of observations becomes linear in the number of observations and boils down to essentially doing Kalman filtering. And so the result of this is that your GP will scale linearly in the number of data points. The price you've paid is maybe a little bit of loss of accuracy because maybe your SDE isn't exactly the same as your GP but it's normally you can normally find one that's very close and you have a separate cost which is embodied in this number D that is a property of the properties of your GP but isn't a function crucially of the number of observations you're making your GP. Sometimes, most of the time D is fairly small it can be kind of moderate for certain classes of GPs roughly speaking, corresponding to um, how complicated the GP is. 
but the net result is scaling like this, which was these and these graphs were computed using temporal GPs, but they are. In the red here, we have the scaling when the internal data in a linear SDE object is represented using static arrays.jl. And in the black, we have what happens when you represent the same objects using regular Julia arrays, both of which are supported by temporal gps.jl and have different strengths in different situations. In this particular situation, you can see that the static arrays do phenomenally well. I was honestly very surprised when I saw this performance. I'm really impressed with static arrays. So you can see that the time on the left here, the time to compute the log probability of 10 million data points is under a second. And on the right hand side, you can see that the time to compute the gradient of all of the things using reverse mode AD is the appropriate amount, amount more. I should, to be fair here, I've chosen examples that are charitable to temporalgps.jl, but the point stands, and they are things you would consider using in practice. So to do this requires a one-line change relative to Steno code. The two SDE function on the third line here is the only change you'd have to make. The rest of the API is the same. So roughly speaking, so Temple, Temple GPs lets you accelerate inference and learning in GPs that you get from steno.jl, which is a Gaussian process probabilistic programming package in Julia. It supports reverse mode AD. It even has checkpointing for memory intensive problems. For example, if you wanted to compute the log probability of a billion data points, which is something you can do. If you want to compute the gradient with respect to them, it becomes quite memory intensive and checkpointing helps you there. As discussed, static arrays works and there's also some support for uh, spatio-temporal problems. There are various things to do in the future, including some API cleanup. I'd like to thank various people, including Lyndon, for reviewing slides. And to summarise, GPs scale badly to large amounts of data. Temporal GPs makes them scale well for time series. Thanks.